Hi guys and welcome to my channel. It's Hila here from Saturday Night Station. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today's post is a browse through of the very first issue of 2020, Roberta Style Magazine, but also the last issue of my subscription. So my subscription was running from um, February to January. So this is the subscription that's, uh, sorry, this is the issue that's going to determine whether I keep my subscription or not. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So cover, I'm not a big fan of the brown lettering that they've gone for, but never mind. That's all right. So we've got pale blue background there. Okay. And here we go. The dawning of a new era, a new decade. And let's see what Berda has got in store. Okay. Cute little um, drawstring caddy. And instructions for how to sew it and right off the bat we're starting off with the must-have pattern piece um, yeah and this time they have gone with the cape so it's a cape um, and it's got some interesting details you've got that um, facing over here and it looks like it's got a concealed button placket which is quite interesting I like their choice of fabric though they've gone with a camel um, and a tan so this one's available in size 36 to 46. Pretty cool. Okay, then we've got a pair of culottes with a contoured yoke. Potentially a great pattern. Potentially a popular pattern as well. It's got the pleats that give it fullness. And they've used a viscose. And it's pretty cool. Quite like how they've styled it. And we've got another of um, these sort of like... Uh, cardigans. Uh, but this time it's got the uh, grown-on sleeve. This... Okay, I'm surprised that this has been given a three dot rating because this looks to me like very simple design lines. Maybe it's because of the fabric that they've used. They've used like a full suede fabric in a really beautiful deep aubergine. I think that this is possibly going to be something that's popular as well. And then over here we've got dress number 106 and that's available in 34 to 42. And it's got sort of like a curved princess seam line darting and shaping on there interesting look and it's got some raglan sleeves i'm getting the impression that um bird like raglan sleeves because they seem to have been popping up these last uh, few months then we've got um your standard generic top with drop shoulders and then they've added uh, voluminous sleeves at the bottom that are cased in elastic although you could easily just take off that lower half and you've just got a simple top um, with the facing so they use viscous crepe for it nothing new there okay i was quite interested in this skirt i like that it's got like the paper bag um waist thing going for it plus i also quite like the fabric that they have uh used it looks like this is a cotton fabric and it looks like a chambray, which is uh, pretty awesome. I do love those boots, though. Those boots are amazing. Okay. And then we've got blouse number 101. And you can see on there that we've got this opening at the back. Not too big a fan of that opening, I gotta say. Um, but it's got gathering right up at the front, which gives it a blousier feel. And it's got some shaping in the form of darts bust darts i have a feeling that this could easily be a popular pattern and then over here we've got sort of like a 70s style dress that has an inbuilt scarf over here which is quite an interesting feature and oh my days i just noticed this right now i don't know if you're seeing this i'm just going to move right over but what on earth is that i do not like those socks those socks have no business being visible I'm sorry, if you're somebody who wears socks like this, please get woolen socks instead. Oh my dear, I hadn't noticed this, but yeah, this this is so not cool. That doesn't work, but we'll just do that. The dress itself, in principle, it's got some interesting features. They've used viscose again um, for it, and it looks like it's got a center back zip. If I were to make this, I'd probably add pockets to it, but it's a simple enough design, and it is in the petite sizes 17 to 21. And then we've got blouse number 107, which is a fascinating take on a hooded sweatshirt. But instead of using a sweating fabric, they have used viscose. And I do like this viscose tropical print that has um, the animals. And yeah, it 
I would consider making this in viscose simply because I think it would be really close because I use I wear my hoodie quite a lot what I do not like though is those cuffs I think that that's a bit too much of a fuss uh, for something that is effectively loungewear but that's an interesting take on that and then you've got this long jacket here which is like a pseudo house coat but it's got pockets I probably prefer this with a belt to be perfectly honest but it's a good staple to have and then we've got the tall pattern of this magnificent uh, coat, which is very minimalist because it doesn't have a collar. You know, it's just got the darts over there and it's got the round neckline. And then you've got the high pocket uh, facings. So these are ornamental. They look like they're ornamental. And then you've got the side pockets there. And I think that this is a nice coat pattern. Um, yeah, I quite like that. And they've made it in a jacket. And it's something that I think if I was looking to go outside my comfort zone with making coats, this is the one that I would go for. The featured sewing pattern is blouse number 112, which means that they will take you through all of the steps. I mean, it's an easy one. So that's pretty cool. And then we have this controversial aluminum foil, or as the Americans like to say, al 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 aluminum <laughs> foil jumpsuit i could not make heads or tails of this when i first saw it because you can't really see the design lines because of the fabric that has been used there um so yeah it doesn't look very appealing does it but when you do look at the line drawing itself it's got some interesting features as a jumpsuit i think that in the right fabric this could be a nice jumpsuit i mean just try and picture it in denim that would be smashing in denim with mustard top stitching on all of those details. But this fabric just did not work for it, which is a bit of a shame. This is a four dot pattern, which means that this is a, you know, you want to challenge yourself um, sort of pattern. But I would, yeah, no. <laughs> fabric, no. Design lines, yes, in principle. Okay. And then we have this beautifully short um uh, design and i gotta say i really love what blasius erlinger and anita bauer have done with this it's very it, it stands out it really does stand out um against the background and it's that uh simple uh coat with the grown-on sleeves it's a house coat really isn't it it's, it's just a really nice house coat and it looks like it's been made in a boiled wool but yeah, of course. And they've used somebody with curly hair, which is very unusual. <laughs> I mean, and then you've got this dress here, which the line drawing doesn't fit with what you're actually seeing on here. So in the line drawing, it looks like it's quite fitted at the waist, but I am not getting that in the styling picture. Is it the fabric that they have used? Is it the model? I don't know, but there's a bit of a disconnect for me when I'm looking at these two. And it almost looks like, on the line drawing, it looks like this is at the waist point, but I can't see it on here. It, I feel like the waistline is a bit higher because I can't tell. Um, so yes, yeah, so I was a bit like, mm, I'd be interested to see what's going to happen with this one on the Birda style forums around the world. And then we're back to that skirt again, the interesting skirt with the paper bag waist and the belt. And this time it's been made in um, cotton sateen, a gold mustardy cotton sateen you know it's, it's it's vaguely interesting i still prefer it in the blue chambray and then we've got a simple well it's not that simple it's a top uh, 115 and it's not simple because you have this insert that you put um on the sleeve if you wanted to add a bit of contrast and color and it's a shame that they haven't used a highly contrasting fabric so that you can really see it popping i'd have probably gone for say maybe like solid purple and then mustard on the stripe just to show what that would look like which is a shame but i think that this is a great one if you really wanted to showcase um, your fabric in different colorways and then we've got that dress again with the interesting uh, princess sleeve uh, princess seam detail in the raglan sleeve and it's made in a twill can't really see much from this but stunning vistas in the background absolutely stunning vistas okay and then super easy pattern is pullover number 116 now this is very similar to sweater dress from january 2019 number 111 in that it's got like this grown on funnel neckline 
which is one of the reasons why I decided against sewing this because I have something similar already that I have sewn up and so I challenged myself to actually sew up something else even though this sort of style, this sort of neckline is right up my alley and I love that. And then we've got those culottes again and you can see how, you know, how wide the bottom of the culotte is and how full that pattern is. So I'm just going to do that to try and get it out of the sun a bit. Sorry, the sun is moving. No, I'm not going to apologize for the sun because it's pretty awesome to have sun. Mm. I'm conflicted about these trousers. Um, yeah, I just personally don't think that they look all of that all that great. I'm not at all interested, but they are the sewing lesson. So, you know, there you go. You have it. Um, they might be great trousers. I don't know. I'd have to see them on another person, but I don't think that the magazine did a particularly great job of showcasing uh, those trousers and then you've got some styling ideas for how you can wear some of the garments that you make you know which is pretty awesome and then we've got an interesting kaftani style top i'm just going to pause and i'm going to move out of the sun so we have um this kaftan uh style top and it's been made in a silk jersey and it looks absolutely amazing because the thing about silk jerseys it, it literally looks like liquid metal um that's on you so it's got like this beautiful drape and this beautiful sheen to it of course it's also very expensive and so if you're going to be making something with all of these drapes that's going to be an expensive project and in principle i like how it looks but i think i'd prefer something like this for summer personally speaking it's not something that i would consider for winter um but yeah i, I think that has got potential to be popular in the summer months because you can easily make this as a beach cover up and then we've got that sweater number 117 again and it looks absolutely fabulous <clears throat> in the french terry that they've made it in and it's a delicate blue color and i just think that it looks absolutely fabulous i would really love to make this with contrasting um, panels because it's got a contrasting panel over there and another one over there and it looks like it's got a faced neckline as well and it's super easy i expect that this is another one that's going to be very popular um, in the sewing com in the bird sewing community we've got top number 115 again and this time they have rightly so used contrasting fabrics and that looks lovely in the satin that they have used i mean i'm not sure i'm i would like to work with satin personally myself but this does look really fabulous as for these trousers number 113 i can i don't i don't see what anything special <laughs> about them and I think it looks to me like they don't even have pockets either, which is um, a little bit disappointing. So no, yeah, I wasn't wowed very much by those trousers at all. This dress, I quite like this dress. I'm quite attracted to this dress because uh, I really like the funnel neckline, number one. I'm a big fan of the funnel neckline, which is why I really like um, the Tilly and the Buttons cocoa top. Love that. I also quite like how they've got the gathering just underneath the neckline, just to give it a bit more uh, fullness um, on there. And then it's got slight shaping with the bust that and i think i think this is possibly going to be one of the most popular patterns in this issue straight away right off the bat because this is something that you can make and actually wear now with tights and a roll neck top underneath it doesn't have a zipper my only beef is it doesn't have any pockets but that's no problem i can always have pockets myself next up is the top with the hoodie and this time it's been made in satin fabric it looks all well and good, but there's just something that my uh, sewing brain, my you know fashion brain cannot process, which is having properly nicely turned out um, sleeve plackets and sleeve cuffs with buttons, but you don't have a button band. You know, instead you've got a drawstring. It just it doesn't gel for me. It just doesn't work for me. I I kind of feel like there's no need to go all that way but that's just a you know as usual a personal thought and i thought that this parka was a very interesting take on a traditional mac because you've got the gun flap over there and you've mixed it with i guess to me this is like the love child of um of a mac and a parka you'd get that really really beautifully made interesting to see that they've used a satin fabric um 
I don't know what type of satin fabric they've used, but it's not the same sort of satin fabric that I've seen previously. But it's a good look, a very brave choice to make it in white. I would never make a jacket in white, but that's because I have five kids myself. But that's a good one. That, that's a really good one, and it's a three-dot pattern. And then we've got the coat again in a lovely, cuddly-looking uh, fabric. And yeah, I still think that this needs to have a belt, personally. If I make that, I would have a belt with it. And then we've got some cute, cute, lovely little kids clothes. I love this dress pattern. This is right up the what I make for my kids anyway. Um, and this one is going all the way up to size 128. Mine are at 122 now. So it's quite nice to have a pattern that's going up to 128 for my twins. And then we've got like this cute little shirt and these cute little trousers in this cute 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 fabric i want to get that fabric and it's a record design fabric so i know i can get that in england but yeah love this love this i thought that they showed up really well with the kids designs in this particular issue um yeah and i like the use of the contrasting fabrics here yeah, it's a great way to use up your scraps as well and you've got these cute little trousers with these cute little pockets definitely going to be making these for my kids and i like that these are quite unisex as well so i can actually make these for um my other son who comes before the twins and um, yeah because he'll be around he'll fit into the 128 um age but absolutely adore that and oh i love this when i saw this in the uh, previews i absolutely got excited by this and i couldn't wait to see what it looks like in the magazine itself and i wasn't disappointed i really do like the style lines i like the 60s vibe that you get from it i like these cute little sleeveless sleeves and you've got the pockets that sort of like go over love everything about it definitely going to be making this as one of my long form makes because it's got it's fully lined and i need to check if i've got a jacket fabric that is actually enough to make a dress because i never used to buy a lot of jacket in my um sewing collection but it might work with something else, mightn't it? But I kind of feel like you need a fabric that is uh, quite substantial so that you can hold those pleats and hold the shape. So yeah, I was very, very happy with this. Definitely added that onto my must make list. Now I love this jacket, absolutely love this denim jacket. Um, but what I like about it is obviously, even though it's got the style lines of a denim jacket, they haven't used denim, they've used, um, what looks like an upholstery fabric or a jacquardine fabric and that is awesome absolutely awesome so i've added this onto one of my to make uh, lists and yeah i really really like that and for the sleeves it's just it looks like it's got an elastic but that's a great make is that but when i make mine i'm going to just add some pockets on the side because i do like having my pockets sort of um go on the side there but yeah quite liked that and then you've got a generic uh, top with a v-neck this time they've just added a zip uh, to it and some little details on the sleeve cuff and we've got some interesting looking trousers they're like cargo pants but they've been made with tent cells so they just look you know on the super classy side and they look like they've got an elastic waistband I'm a big fan of elastic waistbands and trousers. They're so comfortable. And we've got another simple blouse top, which has just got like a little bit of a pleating at the front, which you can't tell because they've used a busy fabric, but that's okay. I really liked the fabric on this dress. It's absolutely, it's so, um, even though it's a winter issue, this just cheered me up. It just looks so summery. So I really was a big fan of the fabric. And I think that this is a nice shirt dress um in principle and i think um it's because it's got a like a half placket what do you call this it's like a half placket polo neck thingy but I, you know i just i like how it looks with the sleeves rolled up and 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 pulled up and i just thought the whole entire styling of it was beautiful and fierce and then we've got that top again with the pleated front thingy majiggy going but you've added grommets to it this is a nice little feature actually i might try doing something like that this coming year and then we've got a skirt which has got an asymmetrical flounce you know it's like this sort of skirts they always remind me of like you know when you're writing cursive 
you just don't finish where the A is supposed to end. You finish it with a little loop. And it's kind of like, you know, technically speaking, the skirt is supposed to finish there. But no, we're just going to add a little loop to it, which gives it more drape, more movement. And I think that this is a fantastic fabric that they have used for that because those stripes really emphasize how asymmetrical this design is. So, you know, great styling, whoever did that. And then we've got that jacket again. I love it. Just love, love this jacket. I don't know how, but I am going to be making um, that at some <laughs> point, but with pockets. With pockets. And then there is a lesson here on how to do a welt pocket, because Brad always try to get you covered like that. And so, and so, ladies and gents, this is what uh, Berta January looks like. Definitely a lot of patterns that I want to make in there. I've already traced something out that I'm hoping to make um, pretty soon in the period between Christmas and New Year's because that's when my in-laws are around and they help a lot with the kids. And what I did trace was number 108, dress number 108. I'm going to be making that one. I'm going to be making some of these trousers for my kids. I would love to make this <laughs> sweatshirt here. I know I'd said I wasn't going to make it, but by the time I got to the end, I was like, oh, life is too short. I'm going to make that. I also definitely want to make this um, this vintage style uh, dress, but I have no idea what fabric I could make with that one. So I already know what fabric I'm going to use for that. I have some fabric I could use for that, but this one, I don't. And I definitely want to make number one, two, four. And I think I've got some fabric for it um, as well. And this might require some grading. But overall, I think that, you know, 2020 has started off uh, quite well um, for Berda. And even though this doesn't look great because of the fabric choice, I'm pretty sure that if somebody makes this in another fabric, like a denim chambray, this will be amazing. Oh, I'd also love to make this if I've got extra time. Number one, one, ten. Okay, so that's it, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed this and that you found it useful. And if you did, do give it a big thumbs up down below. If you haven't already, do subscribe. I put out sewing-related content every week. And now it's your turn. Let me know which ones you're going to be making from Birda One 2020. And until I see you next time, happy sewing, guys. Uh -huh.